Welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link, where our redeemed, revived, and transformed guests get real and empowering youth. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and I'm so happy to be with you on season four. And it's not just season four, it's the international leg of the show. And I'm super, super excited to have with me Minister Ricardo Sims. Now I know that name rings a bell because he has such a powerful story. When I see him, I see a template of God's transformation in the earth. I see a powerful man of God. I see grace. I see someone that is going to take over territories just to populate heaven and God is doing a mighty thing in him he will not only share his story but he has a word just for you want you to get your aunties your uncles your sisters and your brothers let them know that minister Ricardo Sims is in the building over there at Paris but we are together because there's no distance when it comes to the work of the Lord glory to God go and get the family and let them know that we're over here stay tuned We'll be right back. Do you want to be a supporter of Sheena Power Talk? Here are ways that you can become a partner to help this ministry grow. Call 876-429-6004 for more information or email Sheena Power Talk, the number one at yahoo.com, paypal.me slash Sheena Power Talk, cash app, dollar sign i-r-e-n-j-o-h national commercial bank sheena power talk limited st jago shopping center savings account in jamaican dollars 471-599-794 or in u.s dollars 475-116-305 sheena power talk making waves changing lives Sheena Power Talk. And we are rising and take over territory. We are break some curses lyrically. We are shake some kingdom literally. Now show Satan no sympathy. Young people make we grow spiritually. Stop war with the neighbor physically. Draw for the Holy Bible daily. Humble a God feet like baby. Tired for see family in a cemetery. Youths them need guidance mentally. Stop abuse young girls sexually. We need Yeshua in the industry. See it on a try rally you why your destiny. Young girl, keep your identity. Welcome, 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 man of God. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? I am well. I want to say I look sharp over there in Paris. I'm happy <laughs> to have you. And I know my viewing audience is happy to have you as well. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Amen. Glory to God. Can you tell us five significant things about yourself? Ah, uh, five significant things about myself. There are so many, but let me let me just stick with the five. Yeah. Um, I'm introverted, but not for the gospel, not for Jesus, not for, for the good news. Um, you know, I love people hard. And I, and I appreciate people who are loyal and I love loyalty. So um, that's three significant things. The fourth one, I love to cook. The fifth one is that, you know, I love God. You know, God means the world to me. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for all of that. You said you were introverted. I never even knew that. But it's so <laughs> funny. A lot of people that does God work is introverted. You know that? Yeah, I I, I come to realize that. <laughs> people are like that but with that being said man of god i believe that the bible is the foundation of truth what is your favorite scripture and what it means to you well my favorite scripture is psalms 91 and it's it's you have to read the entire thing you know it's because it it, it reminds me that when i am in the presence of god no weapon will be able to prevail against me it also provides all the information i need to to, to be on this journey with christ you know it, it 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 keeps me grounded in him because he tells me if i if i stay under his shadow there's nothing that will happen to me and he tells me you know he got me his angels is uh, surrounded me so it's a reminder to me that if i want the promises of god just follow psalms 91 Amen. Glory to God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, man of God, a lot of people know your story, but I'm just so happy that I'm getting it full on right here. And I know that my audience will be super happy as well. But I want to know a little bit about who was Minister Ricardo Sims before salvation and a little bit about your childhood background. 
Okay, so childhood, I, I was raised in Kingston, Jamaica, in a in a city community. You know, I, I'm a child of uh, my mom. You know, my mom raised me. I didn't have my dad in my life that much. He showed up every now and then, but he wasn't there um, constantly in my life. But I don't think that contributes to my um, struggles that I had because a lot of people think that because there were not a father figure in the picture, why a lot of people might be might might be struggled might maybe struggled with what they they struggled with you know so for me it wasn't that because I had a stepfather so I don't contribute that to my story. However, as a child growing up, you know I was just so confused. A lot of people might think, how can a five year old, six year old be confused about you know identity and gender? Well, I have no words to share or explain to you about that. It was just a feeling that I couldn't explain. I just knew that I was different. I just knew that I didn't want to do the things I saw my boy cousins doing or other boys were doing. I was just so much caught up with things that I saw my girl cousins doing. So I was more gravitating to things that girls were doing, the way I looked, the way I spoke then. You know, people would tease me and people would speak over me and say, I look like a girl and I speak like a girl. So um, that's my childhood growing up in Jamaica. Yes, I did have good times. I did have great, wonderful times with my family. But there was this internal struggle that um, there was nothing I could do about this internal struggle because I I knew because of the area I was living in and the country that I I, I, I was from in Jamaica back in the 90s. It was very um, homophobic. I can't say this is the same now. But you could hear it in the music, you know, and I just didn't want to bring disgrace to my family, one. And two, I just knew that if I should tell anyone about this, it would be something, of, you know, dangerous to me. So I kept this secret in like all my life as a child growing up. And as I grew older, you know, I never talked to anybody about it because I was afraid. So it was like an internal struggle. So imagine a child six, seven years, years old that should be playing with other kids is struggling with something as 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 I did, you know, my mind was constantly on this struggle and 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 worried about people finding out about it. But as I grew older, it, it went from just a confusion thing in my mind, and then it started to be an attraction. As I grew older, I realized that I was attracted to the same sex, and I didn't have any words for that. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what to do with it. So I, I continued to keep that in on the inside. So as I grew older, there was girls that I saw and I, I, I kind of liked them, but I didn't know if I liked them to be with them or I liked them to want to be with like, I didn't know. So uh, I didn't know the feelings that I was having. You know, a teenager, you're growing up, you know, there's a lot of things happening, hormones kicking, you know, and you just don't know what to do, you know. But as I grew older, men would start find me attracted and start abusing me. And then I didn't find what they were doing to me wrong in that moment. I felt like Oh, they knew they knew they know my secret. So I didn't tell anyone. So how 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 does men who love women as according to our culture and how God designed it? Why are they uh, touching me? Why are they interested in me? I'm like, I guess they know my story. I guess I guess they know my secret. So I think what I'm feeling on the outside, they're able to, to see it. Some people can see it and some people can't. So that made me just, you know, believe that what I was feeling on the inside was actually what it is in real in real life. And as I grew older and I met other people like myself in high school, you know, I met two other gay persons who were from Boynt in high school. Remember, this was a secret, but somehow they knew that, you know, I was a bit different. And when they introduced me to the, to the community in Jamaica, that's when I realized that, oh, I'm not alone. There's more people like me. So God created me like this because there's more people. It's not just me. Because before I had met other people in the community, I believe I was just the only one struggling with this, this situation. And as I grew older and I met people and I went out into the world, you know, things start to change, you know, I start to, to be introduced to parties and, you know, stuff like that and other people. And in that moment, I felt welcome. I felt like I found my place. I felt like I found somewhere where, you know, I belong. Even though it was difficult, it was still a secret because I didn't want to disgrace my family. But I, I, I felt like this is where I belong. And someday, someday when I get older, I'm going to walk from this, you know, hiding situation and just live my life out fully. So that was the my, my, my growing up stage and where my confusion started from. But I just want to point out that my confusion didn't start because my father wasn't present in my life. The confusion was just an internal feeling that was there. And then other people would start to, you know, you know, call, you know, speak over me by saying that I look like this or I talk like this or, you know, stuff like that. And then 
you know, when people start to molest you, that's an open door, you know. So it, it, this is how the enemy operates. It starts at a very tender age and then it, it just continues to grow until you finally, you know, decide to accept it and agree with it and say, you know what, this is me. So that's what happened. I took on this identity. I took on the feeling that I thought was mine. Even and you know, now as a Christian in Christ, I realized not because I felt that way, it didn't make it true. You know, but I didn't know any, any any better. So I accepted this as my identity. And as I grew older, you know, I migrated abroad. And when I migrated abroad, you know, this was when all hell broke loose in my life because I realized that in my country you had to hide. You know, you had to hide and have parties, you have to hide and, and do certain things. But when I moved to abroad, I realized that, oh, they're open and nobody cares. I'm like, well, this is for me. So that made me start realize that this is where I'm going to live and this is where I'm going to start doing my own life. And, and that's where the beginning of my transition started, you know, so. Thank you for sharing that. Well, I want to ask you this. Were you raised with proper Christian values and principles? Actually, um, I was I was raised with Christian values and, and, and principle, but now looking back, I was introduced to religion and not relationship, not Jesus. So yes, I did go to Sunday schools, you know, Monday to Friday, you know, we, Saturday, we go to, you know, school Friday, Monday to Friday school, Saturday, you know, mom clean or do something, but Sunday church, every Sunday church, and then after church, Sunday school. So I knew of, you know, religion, but not God, because what, what I was introduced to was hellstone and brimfire, not the love of God, you know, and, and a lot of people think that it's just hellstone and brimstone. That's, that's just one side of God, but there's the other side of God, which is the love, which was, which was what I encountered that led me to walk from that lifestyle. So I grew up with going to church. My mom was even a Christian at some point, and I'm so grateful that she didn't reject me. She, she loved me through it all, even though I didn't present my um, old identity in her face like direct she knew of my lifestyle you know but I always try to protect my life so I was living this double life you know so Christian values yes I knew of it but I didn't know Jesus because nobody presented Jesus to me all people did was condemn me put fear in me and told me that I need to repent or I'm going to hell but if I'm going to go to hell why didn't you tell me how I can avoid going to hell so this is the church I was this is the church I grew up in repent, you're going to hell. And I felt like my sin that I was struggling with was greater than every other, every other sin that was listed in the Bible. So I felt like God hated me more than everybody else. So that's something that I, I wish the church will get to a place to understand. It's not that I need you to water down the gospel. It's not that I need you to, you know, dilute the word of God. But what I need you to understand that the good news is not just a bad news. It's a completion of the word. You have to share the bad and then the good. So you can't just condemn people to hell because God didn't condemn any of us to hell. But if you're going to condemn, condemn us to hell and there's power in your tongue, that's basically what you want for us. And, and, and it doesn't work like that. So, yeah. Yes, to answer your question, I did grow up with Christian values, but not with Jesus. Amen. I thank you. I really thank you that you brought that up because that's all a lot of people know about God is just hell and brimstone. But you said something and, and, and it really, really, really is alarming to me. Relationship over religion. Can you explain what that means to you? Just okay. a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So religion will tell you that come to church and pretend that you're fine. But Christ will tell you that, come as you are, broken, I, I will restore you. If you're weary, come and I'll give you rest. But the church tell you, come, pretend, just God will work it out. Nothing, you don't have to do nothing. God will work it out. You come and you sit in your pain and you don't have anyone to confide in. But Jesus says, you come to me and speak everything, lay all your burdens onto me, make your requests known to me. So you, in a relationship with Christ is that you're able to be yourself with him. You're able to go to him for you know, the things that he has for you. Religion makes you believe that the problem doesn't exist. So pretend until God works it out. But faith without works is dead. So what are you doing for God to work that out for you? You're just sitting on church benches and doing nothing else. That's a life from the pits of hell. And when you do that, what 
what you're going to find is that you're going to get frustrated. And when you get frustrated, you're going to give up on your faith. When you give up on your faith, you're going to walk away because you're going to say, I've been paying my tithes. I've been going to church and nothing has been happening for me. Nothing has been changing. I can't pay my kids um, school fee. I can't provide for my family. I can't do anything. I'm struggling. But pastor is telling me to pay everything and God is going to work it out. That's not how relationship works. Relationship, it's a relationship. You don't talk to God Monday to Sunday. Saturday, but you talk to him on Sunday and you expect your life to change. No, he says you have to put him above everything in your life. You have to seek him, not some days, but every single day. So I want people to break from religion because I was introduced to that. And that's all I knew. And that's why I strayed away. But if I had known relationship, I would have not been down. The, I would have not been down the path I had been down. So I want people to know relationship over religion. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ricardo. Now you are living this transgender lifestyle. Can you tell us about the transition? The transition from just know you're overseas and know you're full on into that type of lifestyle. Did you ever thought that you would have changed today? And did you ever feel empty? Oh, yeah, that's a wonderful question. Um, Empty was something that I have always been all my life, no matter what I did until I encountered Christ. So, and I think God designed it for every single human in this world to have this void within them. So there's this void in every human being, rich, poor, gay, straight, whatever you are, animals, everything, you know, and you have to come back to Christ for Christ to fill that void. No matter how many money you have, no matter what you do, it will give you a high like drug. And then you go back to say, what else? Something is missing. So yes, I have been missing Christ until there was this void on my life. So how I decided to fully, you know, live my life and accept who I am and embrace it. I was living this double life because I love my mom to death. She was the only reason why I didn't just do it from in Jamaica. But in Jamaica, people knew me from the double life because I was living the life I transition to live in, in, in foreign in Jamaica too but it was like behind closed door because my family I live apart from them you know they I live by myself I do everything by myself so I had that place to live the double life so it this wasn't this didn't happen overnight when I transitioned when I tran moved abroad all right so when I got to abroad my mom she's a Christian and I thank her so much for just loving me showing me the love of Christ she never rejected me she never came and judged me what she did she prayed for me what she did, she fasted for me. And that, that is what helped me to, to encounter God because God is faithful. He, he answered her prayers even though she's not here. So when I got to abroad, like, like uh, six months after my mom passed away, and I'm like, God, this can't be real. What do you mean my mom passed away? This don't be me. So, so this made me go out of spiral. I didn't want anything to do with God. My, I, I, I lost a lot of weight. I start stressing. I can't believe that my mom just healthy, just disappeared like that, you know? So that broke my heart to pieces and nobody around me could understand what I was going through, you know? And, and that just sparked something in me. That, that was an open door for the enemy to say, listen, you can die anytime and, and never be who you are. This is the time to fully do what you need to do. So when I heard that, I was said, you know what, God, you don't love me because why would you let me go abroad? And, and just take my mom like that in a situation where I was in. God, you, 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 you do it just like this. And, and, and that's when I said, you know what? I'm going to start doing hormones. I'm going to start doing like I see everybody doing. I'm going to fully live who I know I've always been inside. I'm going to make it a reality because I don't want to day one. I don't want to die one day and never experience who I truly was. And that was just a life from the pits of hell. So the process to get the hormones, went to doctor. And I was just, I had this spirit that was so convincing. Whatever I wanted, I would get. So normally you would have to wait a long time to get on the medication because they have to evaluate you. But when I sat before my psychiatrist, I said, listen, don't you see this is real? This is from a child. And he just speed up the process, gave it to me. And I started the hormones. And when I started the hormones, I literally went to puberty again, just like any young girl would go through. So you can imagine how my mind was wrapped up and far gone. I re relived it just like every, because it's synthetic hormone. So I did it and it transformed me just like how it would do a teenage girl. And so when that happened, I was like, that's nice, but I still need more. There's something that's missing, you know? So I was excited to get it. You know, I'm having, I can live my life now, but there was this void. So I said, all right, the void is there. I still need something else. I think I need to get some implants. I need to do, I need to fully, you know, I don't want to just look like this. I want to fully do this thing. So after that, like a year after I got 
you know, surgery to get, get surgery to do um, implants. And, you know, I did that and I was on high. I was on top of the world. I would get anything I want. People would just in my DM, in my inbox. But at night I was depressed. At night I was, you know, feeling this void and I couldn't understand what this meant. I was like, what does this mean? I can't understand. I have everything I said I wanted. I did everything I could have done. And, and I have friends, I'm traveling, I have money, everything. But there's this void when the light turns off and I don't understand why. So uh, I, at, at that point, I would continue to just go on and go on and go on. But there was this void and I decided, you know, I'm just going to live with the void because I don't understand what the problem was. Right. Whoa. And, and what was that moment when you said, you know what, I'm going to try Jesus? What pushed you to, to Jesus? What pushed you? How did the encounter happen? So the encounter was more of a spiritual. And I want people to listen very careful, uh, carefully about this part of my testimony because I haven't really shared it. And the Lord hasn't really permitted me to go in depth in it. But what he allows me to share is what I'll share with you. You know, so, you know, after, you know, you transition living life, you know, I would be introduced to a lot of things. You know, I would be introduced to, to drugs, marijuana, space cake, all these kind of things, you know, tarot card reading. So in this moment, when I realized there was a void, I knew something was going to come. I knew something was happen going to happen to me. I just couldn't, I can't tell you how I knew it, but I knew the year 2020, there was something that was coming. And before, before that, I remember another person who lived in England who was in the same situation like me. Um, they did, they did just like me, they encountered Jesus and they changed their life and they would always, you know, spread the gospel to me and they would always like put fear in me. And I'm like, listen, if God want me, listen, just leave me when God is ready for me, let me do me because this is how God created me. So I was defensive and it's, and it's in the manner in which he was sharing it to me. And I'm not going to blame it just on that, but the stronghold and the strong man and the demons that were living in me, they didn't want to hear that. And when, when I respond to him in that manner and say, listen, I don't want this when God is ready for me, you're, you weren't really who you are from the beginning. You were just faking it because this is who I am. I can't change this. And God said, I hear this voice in my spirit as I lay down on my bed. Oh, yeah, you will see. That's all. I didn't know where the voice came from, but I knew I had this conviction when it says, oh, yeah, you will see. And so I continued my life and then I start, you know, meeting people, being exposed, being exposed to drugs and having, you know, taking drugs and everything. And then the more I would do that, the pandemic came. And then, you know, I realized I start the person who introduced me to the drug. I start introducing it to other people. It was like something I started to get addicted to. But that, what I didn't realize was I was opening a door, a spiritual door for a great attack that was coming on my life. So in the year 2020, you know, having fun and one day. Remind you, I'm, I'm not smoking weed. I'm not doing anything. I'm sober. I'm perfect. I'm normal. And as I was packing on my birthday to travel to go see a friend, something supernatural happened in my life where my eyes was just open to another realm, where my mind was literally being, you know, I was being driven out of my mind because of the things I was, you know, exposed to. I was seeing things that if I should say it to others, they would call me crazy. They would call me a madman. They would think something was wrong with me. But during this process, I knew whatever I was going through, keep it to yourself. Because this is, this is going to expose and reveal people in your life. So I didn't tell anyone what was going on. And I endured this, you know, this thing. And I was, you know, I was just seeing things. God was opening my eyes to the realms of the spirit to see that, hey, you're playing with your soul. But I love you this much, little boy. I love you this much for you to wake up from the things that you're going through. So even though you feel like you're going to lose your mind, even though you feel like you're going to die, I had to go to this great length. I had to give the enemy access to your life in order for you to wake up because you're he has ripped your mind from you and 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 put you to sleep to the belief system that you had since you were five years old so this is what it's going to take for you to really wake up because i built you strong and no matter what happened in your life you will bounce right back and go back to your vomit so god says this time you will not do that for sure because everyone that is in your life I'm going to show you their true intentions for your life. And, and God opened my eyes to the spiritual and I've been, he opened it for one entire week. And I kept running from this thing. I kept running from death. I knew I was going to die and I kept running and I kept running and everywhere I would run, I would find people chasing after me, you know, and I would, the devil took control over my mind at this point. 
because he wanted to drive me out of my mind. He told me, you know, walk across the street. It's just like he did with Jesus. You know, he says, if you, if you believe in God, walk, close your eyes and cross the street. And I did exactly that, but I had no knowledge of the word. I didn't know the devil was tempting me. I didn't know I was not supposed to put God to, you know, to tempt my Lord, my God. I, I didn't know any of this, but I was doing it. And the enemy was doing all of this in hopes that I would kill myself in sin. But God was graceful. God was merciful. And during that experience, God sent somebody to save me. When I was, you know, I had this incident where we were fighting, you know, strangers and I was, you know, fighting on the street and they beat me down to the ground. And I, I just knew I was going to die. And when I would lay on the ground on the floor, flat down on the floor, and I knew they were punching me to my last breath. I felt this man, this person, physical. I, I closed my eyes, but I felt this person that wrapped their arms around me, a warm Ooh. embrace, and they hugged me. And when they hugged me, I knew everything was going to be okay from that moment. And when that happened, you know, God separated me for like a, a, a two weeks. Everybody's searching for me. Nobody knew where I was. God separated me. God put me in a psychiatric hospital because he wanted to separate me from people who's going to come and say, no, no, something is wrong with you. What you're going through is not real. God says, all right, I know you and I know the people who are going to come to try to tell you what your experience is not real. So he set me apart for two weeks. And when he set me apart for two weeks, he revealed to me, this is me. This is what I'm telling you. After you die, there's another life. And I need you to understand that because I love you this much, son. I want you to wake up. Amen. So my spiritual experience was what I encountered God through. But that wasn't the reason why I gave my life to God. As that experience, you know, weared off, I went right back to my vomit. As, as I said, I went right, right back. Remember, I just God just showed me that he created me a man and not a woman. And I agree and said, yes, God, that's true. And I said to myself, God, if you save me, I will give my life to you. But here I am, went back straight to doing the things I was doing, starting to bargain with God. And God is like, this boy don't get it. He doesn't get it. So what God did after that was flourished me with his love. The love of God leads to repentance. The fear of God is necessary, but the fear that I experienced for five days wasn't the reason why I turned away from my sin. It was a seed that was planted in me for me to wake up, to understand the reality of life. The physical realm is where we live, but the, the spiritual one is more realer than the physical one that we're in. We're just not able to see it. And there's a reason why you're not able to see it. Your brain doesn't have the capacity to see it because if you see it, you will drive yourself out of your mind. And that's why you see so many mad people walking on the street, speaking to themselves. They're not speaking to themselves. They're trapped in that state of mind, they're trapped in the realms of the spirit and their demons that is with them are tormenting them. I lived it, experienced it, but the grace of God rescued me. So when you see me doing what I'm doing, it's because I know where I went and I know where I am and I know where I'm going. And I want everybody else to experience that, you know, know where you're going. This life is temporary. This is not home. This is where God has, you know, put us to experience life and to do his will and his purpose. And the day you get to that understanding is the day your life will change. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm not done talking about your transition to God, but I know that you are now an author of this amazing book. And what it says is wrong identity. But there's a chapter in this book where you wrote about restlessness. Is that also relating to everything that you've been through at the psychiatric hospital and everything? No, nothing with the psychiatric hospital is really in that chapter, but the experience that I, what I just explained is really there and some other things, but the restlessness was the season where I did everything I wanted to do, but still I was restless. The surgery, the hormone, relationship, alcohol, pardoning, traveling, all of that, I did all of it, but at the end I was still restless. And that's because God needed me to, you know, come back to him, you know, and the day I decided to come back to him, that restlessness is no longer in my life. Mm. I'm going to talk a little bit about how and who and what inspired you to write this book. But you also wrote a chapter about the awakening. Did the awakening have anything to do with the encounter? Yeah, the awakening is basically when um, I start realizing that there's more to life. 
than me. There's something bigger than me. And there's something that, you know, that is going to come. And the experience I had in waking up to realize that my life was wrong and I have to change, you know, but the way the awakening, there's so much in it, but it, 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 it it's, it's, it's this, the process in, you know, waking up from what I was sleeping from all my life. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Now I want to know the point where you totally completely surrendered to God. Tell us a little bit about your baptismal experience and, and how you, you just stopped everything and gave God a chance in your life. Okay. So, um, when I had, you know, come from, came back from, come back to my mind, come back to reality, um, I was trying to bargain with God. I was trying to say, God, I will not have any relationships. I'll just be with you, but I want to remain like this. And God gave me the time. God gave me the time. God, I'm, I'm going to be celibate, God. Just just let me be like this. And I'm like, why, why would I think God would give me a, a blight? Why would God change his word for me? Like, who am I? Like, you know, but I didn't have the knowledge then. So I was playing one foot in, one foot out. I, I knew I was going to be a Christian, but I wanted to be a Christian, you know, in my old ways, in my old self, because I didn't believe I could give up the identity that I had created on my life. I didn't think it was possible to give up that and become who I am today. I didn't see this for myself. I didn't think I could do this for myself. So I, for, I, for, there was a season where I was just bargaining with God, with letting go, with giving up all of it. And, you know, he, he was patient with me, you know, and the first day I went and I started, you know, I, I, back, back then I changed the way I dressed, you know, I changed the way I looked. I was trying to be, I was trying to go into religion, how I looked and everything, like how you're supposed to wear this and wear that. That's all I was into. And God was merciful to me. And God says, I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to give you some time. But this testimony that you just shared as your old self didn't bring any glory to me. You're sending people to hell in doing so. And I'm like, what I just, I make it, I'm brave and I'm telling people about you. God says you're misleading people about me. You're telling people that they can stay the way they are and serve me. And, and you're doing more damage than good. And God says, you're going to go back in, all the, in front of all these people to tell them the truth. And I'm like, wow, how am I going to do that? People are going to say I'm crazy. People are going to say, I don't know what I want. I transition. So people, the enemy start with his tricks. What people are going to say. People are going to mock you. People are going to do So I was listening to those things. Mm -hmm. And there was one day when God was like say, saying on my spirit, share your testimony, share your testimony. And it would never leave me, share your testimony. And one day I got so tired of the voice and I turned on my phone, went on Instagram and I, I show up as me, my old, like me now, I'm, I'm no more wigs, nothing. And I'm showing up now in a tom, still have the boobs and everything. And I shared my true story. And when I ended my life, when I ended my life, he says, you overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And I played this song that says, I am free. Oh, I am free all night. And that's when I realized something shifted in my spirit. And I realized that, wow. So I was in bondage because I was afraid to share the truth. You shall know the truth and it will set you free. Glory to God. I don't know who you are, but the truth is what you need to share to be freed from what you're going through. And that is when God freed me. And that's when the warfare started. The enemy started to fight me now. He fought me to go back. He fought me spiritual warfare. He says, I'm going to get you out of your house. I'm going to get you out of your mind. And I run away from my home. I lock up my home and I go live with strangers. And God says, boy, you don't trust me. Boy, you don't know who I am. Boy, you say you're a Christian, but you don't know me. Go back into that house. Go back into that house if you trust me. And I, it, took me, it took me about three months to go back home. And when I go back home, the warfare started. Let me tell you, man, every night I don't sleep. In night times, there was no sleep for me. The enemy would come. It, it was, you would hear him coming. He would step, 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 step coming to try to hold me and choke me. So I couldn't sleep. There was a period where the Bible was my pillow. I put the Bible on my face because I think that would have, you know, ward off the demons and the devils and the warfare that was coming. And then I said, God, how is it that I come to you and I'm going through this? Because I think that when I come 
unto God, everything would have just disappeared. My life would have been smooth. And God says, no, you're warring. You're learning how to fight. You're going to learn to know who I call you to be. You're going to learn to know your authority in me. You're going to learn to fight the devil. And I stayed in the house every night, every night, the warfare. And every day it get lesser and lesser and lesser. And then I realized, oh, he's just trying to intimidate me. He don't have no real power over me. Oh, he's a fool. He can't do what he says he wants to do to me. And I started to learn to use the word of God. And that's when I took it serious because I realized that, okay, if there's two entity fighting and the one that I choose to be on his side have more power than him, I'm going to choose this one because I want to, you know, to win this, 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 vic this battle. So I, cho I chose to stay with Christ and I chose to fight the enemy by with the word of God. So there was a season of isolation, which I'm still somewhat in, where God revealed the things that was in me. You know, I had to repent of the things I got caught up in. I had to, you know, forgive people. I have to let people go. I had to do self-deliverance. I had to, you know, there were several nights where I would be home and I would just be screaming. I'll just be screaming. And I'm like, I don't know what this, this come like. This is like some scary movie thing. I don't know what is happening, but I followed it. I followed the, the, the prompt of the Holy Spirit. And then it says, fast is going to be your best friend. So I fasted, I fasted 21 days, seven days, 21 days, no fruits, no, no, veg, nothing but just vegetable. Some days water, some days, you know, six hours, six, it, it was just a six months fasting, fasting, fasting. And the more I spend in the presence of God, the more I isolated myself from the people that could have, you know, you know, direct me from off the path that God has, has placed me on. It was the more something was happening in me. My mind was being renewed. My body was being transformed. My desires was, was being changed. They were being changed. And so you need to be in the word of God. You know, you, you renew your mind by the word of God, not what people say, not what you do, but by the word of God, you know, and I remember, even when I decided to let go the female part of me, I went back because I didn't know my identity. So I went back to the identity I was as the gay man before. And so I put in the long braids and everything. And then the Holy Spirit, you know, convicted me and I cut it short. I said, maybe it's too long. That's why I'm feeling like that. And I cut it short. And then God says, no, you're going to take it out. And then I took it out. I just sit down and I take it out. So I spent one whole weekend braiding my hair myself. And then the next hour, God said, chop all of this out. And I cut it out and I cut it out. And God says, you're going to renew your mind, you know, put on the new armor. It's a new thing. It's a new man. You're a new man. And I'm like, what does these things mean? I don't understand. But I kept, I kept, you know, seeking after him. And, and the more I seek after him was when I realized that, you know, I'm giving my life to God fully because he loves me this much. Because he would start showing me every time in the world when I was supposed to be dead, whether that was car accident, held at gunpoint, all of that. He says, did you know that was me? And I said, how could that be you when I was a sinner, when I was flying in your face, when I was living in a whole different identity? How was this you, God? This don't make any sense. And Jesus says, yes, I loved you all your life, but I didn't love your sin, but I still loved you. So when I realized that my mom loves me, but not in this capacity, because he says, I'm the one who died for you, paid the price for you. I'm like, God, you really love me. So for months I would cry, but that was deliverance. The crying was deliverance, you know, because I'm, I'm being exposed to true love, real love. So if, if God loves me in the manner, which is how he presents it to me, I'm going to stick by him because he loves me. So that's why I'm sold out because I know how much he loves me. He cares for me. He protects me. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm just here in awe because I love your story. And I just feel God as you're speaking. And I know you're carrying the wealth of the anointing. But I want you to tell us a little bit about your baptismal experience. You went through the warfare, you went through the fasting, you went through the word, and you've gone through that process. Tell us about your baptismal experience. Also, I had two baptisms. So the first one was because in my spiritual encounter, I, as I mentioned, I knew something was going to happen. So I was chasing to go to get baptized. You know, it was COVID time. No church was open. So I was in during my, my spiritual experience, I was just trying to get to a seat to baptize myself because I knew I was going to I was on my way to hell. I just knew I can't explain it, but I knew. So I'm like, I'm, I need to get saved before I make it to this place, you know, but uh, that was just God waking me up. So my first baptism was in a Catholic church. I, I didn't know it was a Catholic church, but I got baptized in a Catholic church as my old self, you know, and, and, and when I got baptized, they, they didn't know my story, but the woman said, the, the, the priest or the pastor or whatever she was, she asked, do you have something to tell me? And I just knew that was God saying, saying to say this to her, tell her my truth. And I said, no, I'm good. I just need to be baptized. You know, I got baptized 
and nothing significant happened. I felt like nothing really happened, you know, and 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 life continues. But I, I remember when God gave me the appointment to remove, you know, the implants and everything, you know, I had my true baptism in the realms of the spirit when I lay on the bed. As I lay on the bed, I was laying on the bed and I feel this bright light, this colorful light, this light that's wrapped over me. And I felt I can't explain this, the feeling. But when I took out the implants was when God was able to give me what he says I need to have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was not dwelling in me when I was still having the implants, even though I knew I was a Christian because God don't work with corruption. So these had to go. Before God gave me what he says he would give me, they had to come out. And when they come out, I was laying in my hospital bed after surgery and I, the, I had the dream and it happened. But when I woke up, it was vivid. It was real. It was like it happened right now in the moment. And from that day, like, yeah, my life was changed. So I was baptized in, the, in, the, in my dream in the realms of the spirit. But then my public baptism for my, you know, my, my, my faith was um, a second one because I knew the first one I did didn't mean anything. And I wanted the real one as Ricardo. So I got my second baptism and it was just like, it was just wonderful and, and, and amazing. And I, and I look at how graceful, merciful and graceful and patient Jesus and God is because he knew I did this first baptism that didn't mean anything. He didn't condemn me. He just allowed me to get it right. He just gave me the chance to understand that, hey, this wasn't of me. This is not what you're supposed to do. So I had two baptisms. One was not really of God. This, probably three because I did one, you know, one before, one in the hospital, in the spirit, in my dream. And then the sec the third one was in the physical one as Ricardo. So that's all my baptism. Yeah. Wow, wow. Amazing. I just want to congratulate you and I just want to celebrate what God has done in you. Man of God, it's just so awesome. And and before I even ask you the other question that I want to ask you, many people that used to that that are what you used to be is saying to themselves, I was born this way. What would you say to them? Well, if you feel like you were born this way, um, I had to be born again. As Christians, we all have to be born again. So be born again, because you know. This was your first birth. The second birth is in Christ. So you have to understand that the way you came out of your mother's womb is how God created you because God is your creator. God is the one that knows your entire story. Even though you might feel like you were born that way, it doesn't make it true. A feeling doesn't make it the reality because I can feel like I'm rich today. I can feel like I'm poor tomorrow. I can feel anything. I'm not poor. I'm rich in Jesus name, but an example. Get what I'm saying? So your feeling is not valid. You know, sometimes I feel like I want to feel depressed and I'm like, that's not what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm going to be joyful because the word of God is my, you know, my, my, my strength and my joy. So I declare these words over myself that this is my reality and not what I'm feeling. All right. So I just want to tell you, I used to feel like that and I went all the way in. I was fully transitioned. I did everything you could think of, hormones and, you know, everything. I was living like this. I had this mindset since I was five years old. My mom couldn't change me. No one was able to change me. But when I encountered God's love, that's when I was able to realize that my identity can only be found in the one who made me. If you have a problem with your iPhone, you can't take it to Samsung. Only iPhone can fix it. So your problem, the void that you're feeling, your confusion, only if you go to Jesus who created you, to God, he will be able to reveal and fix every problem that you have in your life. You can't do it on your own because I was not able to do it based on my story. You see the lens that God has, you know, brought me to, 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 to change me, but I was not able to do it. So it was me surrendering to God and, and trusting God. So it has to be a decision that you want to make. Do you want to continue to you live your life in depression, anxiety, doubt, fear, all of this, or you want to, you know, get rid of all this feeling and, and, and know who you are truly, because all of us, we have a purpose on this earth. None of us are ins insignificant. We all have a reason to be, and you can only find that in Jesus Christ. So if you feel like you were born that way, try Jesus for yourself. Ask God, okay, God, I feel like this, but who do you say I am? Who am I to you? Are you real God? Give God a try. Give him, put him to the test. He wants to hear. He, he loves a challenge. So if you said, God, I want to know who I am. If you show me who I am, then he loves that kind of a challenge. So if you want to know who you are, Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you so much. And I know that you are 
fully transform. They are doing what you have to do. You have written your book. But a lot of questions that people ask me, I want to ask you, now that you are living this life and you have experienced the love of God and you now have relationship over routine because you could have just had a routine, but now you have relationship. You have come to know Jesus Christ for yourself. Do you ever struggle with the urges to go back to your lifestyle? Is it something that you have to keep renewing your mind or keeping keeping away from a certain things? Do you ever think about even going back? Does memories affect you? So I want to answer this question very carefully because I don't want people who are on their journey to think that because I have arrived to this point in my journey that they're doing something wrong because it is a journey. So in the beginning, it wasn't the case. In the beginning, I would not want to go back to the... In the beginning, yes, I felt like I was, as I said, I was bargaining with God. But after I decided not to bargain with God anymore, I would still have that feeling and that urge. And I, I was confused about it. And so I went to God blatantly and honestly, because that's what relationship do, not religion. So I know you're my father. I know you're my friend and my everything. So I can confront you with what I'm going through. So I went to God and I say, hey, listen, you see all that I've done. I've did, given my real testimony. Listen, I, I, I can't serve you. I can't follow you and have this struggle. So what are we going to do? Because I can't fix it. So you are the boss. So you have to go fix it. Yeah. And then he says, all right, I like your honesty. You're going to go on this fast. And when I went on the fast, I realized that after I've ended the fast, I realized that after months, I could be around guys and I'm not, I don't care. I don't find them attractive. I don't have any interest. And the more I stayed with Jesus, it was the more this feeling or this attraction out of me just disappeared. It went, you know, you know, so this is no longer my case. And when the enemy realized this was no longer my case, he tried to get me to loss in other ways, you know, which I have learned to not loss. Don't keep your eyes, don't keep them on up, you know. So um, so God has restored my nature as because he can do anything, you know. But a lot of people who might be going through their journey might have not yet arrived there. So I don't want you to think that so you're doing something wrong, but continue to seek him, continue to trust him. And there's some fasting and things you're going to have to do because some things only go through prayer and fasting. So I want to encourage you to do that, but you can be set free for whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. So I, I trust and believe that I'm free. Uh, sin is not something that I'm enticed by because I know, I don't know if it's because of my experience. I don't know what it, but I am truly sold out for God. I want nothing to do with sin. I've had it all. I've had experience where I had money, I had experience where I had all kinds of things and none of that filled me. But I have Jesus now and it replaced everything I've ever earned had in my life. So what's the point? I don't know if it was the experience that has transformed me in this way. I can't tell you, but I'm truly transformed and this is no longer my struggle. I don't care to sin. I don't. The, the enemy can't enti entice me with sin. But yes, he's going to fight me still with other things and other areas in my life. But sin is not something I care for. Amen. Thank you so much. And as you explained that and you did it so beautifully, can you tell us now, are you attracted to females? Are you? <laughs> you married with children and kids. And For me, um, well, children and children and kids is the same thing, but do you see yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, for some reason, yes, I do. And um, I do find women to be very beautiful and I do understand why God created women. So there's this different kind of love I don't know. I don't know how God does this, but there's this different kind of love that God has placed in me when it comes on to woman. I understand them. I love them. I want to care for them, I, you know, but for me to want to be in a relationship, of course, but not a relationship that's going to stress me, not a relationship that is not ready for, you know, this kind of situation that I am in with Christ. So I trust that if God has somebody for me, that person would be prepared for who I am, what I've been through and my ministry. Because for me, I, I would not allow anything to stop me. So to answer your question, yes, I am attracted to women. And for some strange reason, I just like women who are just, you know, simple, Christ-like, you know, who dress in, a, in, in how I used to be. I would never want somebody like that. I want a woman who values herself, who sees that she is, you know, royal priesthood. You know, a Proverbs 31 woman, that kind of woman. So, yes, I am attracted to women. Okay, nice, nice. So let's talk about this book. What inspired it? So after my spiritual encounter, yeah. um, somebody randomly just reached out to me. And when they reached out to me, they didn't know what I was going through. They didn't know nothing about me, but they just reached out to me in my 
spiritual warfare situation after you know I came to Christ and they just prophesied and tell me the enemy tried to take your life but he couldn't and there's a book and, and all kinds of things but I knew I knew that there was a book but I didn't want to do it I was I was fearful to do it I didn't I didn't want to do it because you know there was so much warfare in doing it and it took me like over a year to finally just get it done you know and every time I would delay that was the enemy because he didn't want me to get this testimony out, you know, and so it what inspired me to write it is because God wanted it to be written first and foremost. And and two is for me to heal in the process and for people who understand that, listen, listen, you might think that it's impossible to live a certain lifestyle, but every person walking this earth, if your identity is not rooted in Christ, you're living in the wrong one, my friend. And this book is not just about gender dysphoria or the LGBT situation. This is about identity crisis, the grace, love, and mercies of God, and how we all struggle. And without Christ in our life, eh, nothing won't make any sense. So yeah, that's that's what inspired me for people to you know have a place where they can go and find something like this. Thank you so much. And who does this book reach? Does it reach beyond the old, in between, who would be, what was this, who are the set of people that this book was written to reach? So um, Christians who don't know how to minister in compassion Ooh. or Christians who don't know how to, you know, handle, because you don't understand a person's lifestyle, that shouldn't de determine whether or not you want to share the good news, not just the bad, but the good news. So this points Christian how to, you know, minister to people who are living in sin, yeah. There's a chapter with ministry. So people who don't know how to do ministry, who are just launching out in ministry, the best people to lead you, a person to lead you in ministry is the Holy Spirit. So ministry, let's talk about Jesus in, is in there. So there's things that you need to know that is in there. It's my own process, journey, mistakes, truth, you know, my freedom, how I was set free and delivered. It's all there, you know, all my mistakes, all the convictions, everything. So I don't want, I know it's titled wrong identity and people would just associate that with just because I had a wrong identity, right? Wrong identity. But the reality is we all have a wrong identity if we're, our identity is not rooted in Christ. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you're not just a doctor. You're not just this. Your identity should be rooted in Christ. So this will help you with your relationship with Christ. This will help you how to, you know, create a real relationship and not relation religion with Christ because he wants re relationship and not religion. So this is for the old. Your family might be struggling, whether it's gender dysphoria, whatever, gay friends, whatever. It, it is for everybody. There's even a chapter dedicated to the church. Message to the church, matches, matches to the church in Jamaica too. So there's a whole lot in there. God, I this is a divine book that was done and that's why it took so many time god gave the chapters the name he gave me the name immediately after my experience before the words the chapters what to share everything so i knew it's a divine thing and that's why the enemy fight it that much so it is available everywhere on on on, on amazon and wherever you want to you know you can find book on online you can find it you have two copies and also you have the audio version you have the hard copy and you have the paperback you know, and uh, maybe soon the audio version will be coming. But this book is for every Christian, anybody who wants to strengthen their relationship and get out of the wrong identity and put their identity in Christ. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, guys, I want you to go and get this book. I want you to get it for a family. I want you to get it for a friend. Whoever you know is struggling, get it. You know what I love about this interview, Paul Gang? It's leading you back to the book. Because I know many of you want to hear a lot more details, but guess what? I want you to go on Amazon and I want you to get wrong identity and you will know a lot more about our minister, Ricardo Sims. We listened to his transformation story and it was awesome. It's amazing. And listen, he's going to share his social media because you will get more contents about him. He also has a talk show like this. So you will get more contents from him. But right after he minister to us, because he must minister to us before he leaves, so I'm going to ask you, man of God, I don't know what the Lord laid on your heart for this year. I don't know what the Lord laid on your heart for this week, this month. But I want you to know, just think about the audience and just minister to us all. So I want to tell you the importance of relationship and not religion. I, this has been in my spirit this week. And I know God di divinely did that because a lot of people are not seeing results because they choose religion 
over relationship. Let me tell you, God can do all things in your life. But if you're in religion, you will not be able to experience that. So I come to tell somebody that, you know, walk away from religion and start being serious about your, you know, your relationship with Christ. You won't, you can't be in love with somebody and you only talk to them sometimes. You can't be in love with somebody and you just do it when you feel like it's okay. You know, God says, you know, you have to put him above everything in your life. It's hard to do that because we're physical beings. We don't see Jesus in front of us. But when you read the word, you'll understand that he is with us. He is true. He is real. And let me tell you, I have lived and seen the promises of God fulfilled in my life. And I'm here to invite you. If you want to live a, you know, a victorious life, you already have the victory, but a victorious life in Christ, come out of religion and start seeking God. God tells you that when you seek ye first the kingdom and all its righteousness, then all will be added unto you. It tells you that greater is he that is within you than those that are against you. So your problem, your struggles, whatever you're going through in your life, he is greater than that. But if you don't know him, how are you going to know that he's greater than that? You're going to trust the lies and the doubts and the fear that you're receiving. But when you know what God has spoken about you, when you know what God has promised you, you're able to say to those things and those situations that I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think according to his power that work it within me. So he tells me that he's greater than my problems. He's greater than the sickness. So I want you to get into it relationship because when you do that my friends your life will never be the same you know nobody comes in contact with Jesus and remain the same so you might be struggling with something for about 30 years 15 years five years two months whatever the case may be and you're still in the same position and you're like questioning if this don't make if this even make any sense because you're doing everything you, the church tells you to do but you're not receiving anything but I come to tell you if you walk away from that and go into relationship with Christ he tells you that those who confesses them sin confesses their sin shall obtain grace and mercy and they will prosper so you don't have to be fearful to tell God what's really on your heart you don't have to be fearful to tell God the truth God I this don't make any sense why am I struggling in this area I'm not telling you that we're not going to have trials and tribulations but there are certain things that God tells us as Christians that is already designed for you and for me. But if you don't know what is there for you, how are you going to receive it? So I'm here to tell somebody, go into relationship and get out of religion because relation, relationship, religion don't have any fruits. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You're trying to strive to be. You don't understand that you can't do this on your own. It Christ with religion, with relationship, you know that you can't do it on your own and you need him. God wants you to thirst after him that you may never terse again but you're playing games you're playing church you're playing you know religion and that will not give you the freedom that you're looking for yes a lot of people fail to understand that god has delivered us from sin god has not god has delivered us from the grave dead but there's also another part that you have to play Amen. That's why he tells you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But you can't just accept salvation, do nothing else. No prior life, no fasting, no, no seeking, nothing. Not putting him above, not telling him your problem, not repenting of certain things that you have done. Because listen, the blood was shed for us, but the consequences still remains. The sins that you were doing in the world, there are consequences that is still attached to that. And you have to break these things. You got to break these things. And I want to you know, encourage somebody to go in the book of Isaiah tonight and read you know, chapter 58, because a lot of us fast, but we're not fasting effectively and we're not seeing any results. And then we want to give up. Fasting don't make any sense because I'm doing everything. Yet you fast, but you still do your own thing. Yet you fast, you're still on the phone gossiping. Yet you fast and you're still quarreling with people. You're still fighting with people. Where is the time for God in this fast that you're doing? you're doing. Where is the time? You have to be intentional about why you're fasting. So the next time you fast, get a book, get something and write down what you're fasting about. Bring it to God. Your intention has to be pure. Yes, we want God to give us something. Yes, we want answers and direction. But the main thing that you should want is to be in communion with God. And that's where you can have a Effective fasting in your life. So I come to tell somebody out of religion and straight into relationship with Jesus. And he will, you know, provide all your needs. Everything that you don't know the answers for, he will give them to you. When you seek him, when you chase after him, when you remove your friends, husband, wife, and children out of the equation and put him above everybody, that's when you'll be able to see the God that I serve, we serve in your life, move for you. Amen. With that being said, man of God, just go straight into prayer. Pray for us. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. We are glad and we will rejoice in it. Mighty God, we thank you for everything that you have done in our life. We come to give you thanksgiving. We come to give you praise. Your name is above all name, but yet did you honor your words and your promises to us above your name. So tonight, I want you to tell somebody, mighty God, I want you to use the Holy Spirit to tell somebody that they're fearfully and wonderfully made. I want you to tell somebody that they're not rejected. That spirit of rejection, I come to tell them that they're not rejected. I declare and I decree the favor of God upon their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, you said there's life and death in our tongues and we will eat the fruit of it thereof. So therefore, God, we're going to eat the favor that you have placed upon our lives. We're going to come out of agreement, Father, with the spirit of rejection and we're going to accept and come in agreement with your spirit of favor. Mighty God, we ask for your wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. Father, as we go out this week, we ask that you lead us, lead our paths, and direct our paths, cover us, our families, almighty God. Let every closed door that was shut in the realms of the spirit be open in the name of Jesus according to your will and not my will in the name of Jesus. Lord, lead the people to the place where they need to be this season. Touch their hearts, that healing that needs to be done in their hearts. Lord, lead them to where they need to be to receive that healing and that's in your presence. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. We give you praise. We give you honor and we declare that we will live and not die, that we are the head and not the tail. We thank you, God, this evening for everything that you have done for us, will be doing for us. We give you thanks for it and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And if you believe that God can heal you, you ask of him. I want you to understand that depression in your mind, that thing that you're struggling in your mind, that doubt, that fear, that unbelief. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 tells you that he has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Therefore, I come to declare over your mind that you will not doubt God. You will not give up on your faith. You will not give up on God because God comes to tell you it starts in the mind. The enemy attacks the mind, but he tells you that you have power over the enemy. Greater is God that is within you than those that are seeking to come against you. So those thoughts, those negative doubts, I declare that you will use the word of God. You have authority according to Luke 10 verse 19, for I have given you the authority to trample upon serpents and pestilence and over all the powers of the enemy. And by that means, you should speak to your situation and tell it that I have the authority, not by my might, not by my power, but by the spirit of the living God. You poverty, you have to go in the name of Jesus. You spirit of delay and hindrance and blockage, I command you for greater is he that is within us than those which are you that is against us. We declare this word and we thank God for this in the name of Jesus. If you believe it when you pray according to his word, he says it will be yours. According to Matthew 7 verse 7, he says, ask and it will be given. Seek and it shall be found. Knock on the door shall be open unto you. I come to tell you that you will seek you first the kingdom and all its righteousness that all will be added unto you in the name of Jesus. Matthew 7 verse 7, it says, ask. So I'm coming to tell you tonight, ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you're under the sound of our voice and you're not saved, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. Please say yes. You know that Jesus Christ is Lord and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Get saved today. Find a Bible believing church. Get baptized. Be born again of the, the water, the spirit and the blood. And Jesus will do amazing things for you. I love this book because it reminds us that our true identity is in the Lord. Man of God, tell us again where to find the book. Tell us all your social media. And listen, it will be floating on screen, guys. I just want, and it, the links will be in the description below. Just click on it. Let us have four, 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 wow, 400 people first week buy a book. 400 people first week buy a book off Amazon. I was about to say 100, but 400 come on. So 400 people buy the book on Amazon. And let us continue to support him. And he's going to tell you all his social media. So go over there and you'll get more inspirational content. So go ahead. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. And I hope that this will lead you to Christ. And because it's it's the whole goal of this whole platform and my story. And I just want to tell you where you can find me. I am a host of a talk show, which is called Sir Talk Show, which is uh, Still I Rise, because no matter what happens in life, you can rise above it. So you can find me at Sir Talk Show, S-I-R talk show one word so it's one word together and then you can find me on my youtube channel as ricardo sims i'm also on tiktok as ricardo sims i'm on instagram as ricardo sims official so you can find me there and you and i just want to tell you i'm telling you here first 
because uh, you will have Still I Rise podcast coming soon. And I just want you to know. So if you're, you're not able to watch, you'll be able to listen on your car and you're going. So this is just so, you know, this has been in the making since I came to Christ. So he's now telling me podcast. So I want to tell you that the podcast is coming and it will name it will be named Still I Rise podcast by Ricardo Sim. So you can look out for that. And also there's another book that is coming, which is, is titled Time to Get Up. Let me tell you, time to get up. This is, say no more, but just follow me over there or you can email me at my um, email at sirtalkshow at gmail.com. God bless. Thank you so much, man of God. One thing I love about God, when he transforms life, he gives you influence, affluence, intelligence, eloquence, and the coins them just... Yeah. <laughs> The question just continue. And I'm just super, super happy, guys. And I'm happy that I can, you know, have a platform that can send more people over to his. He has Sir Talk Show, which is amazing. I've been over there as well. And there are a lot of inspirational stories over there. We are focusing on change and transformation. We are the template of God transformation in the earth. And I'm saying to you, if God did it for me, if God did it for man of God, he can do it for you. So let this story encourage you and bring light into your life light that will illuminate the darkness from into you, within you and around you. Man, I, God, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I just want to take this opportunity to even just look directly at you and to say I really admire you. You inspire me and I love your story because every time you speak on it, I feel that this is not just for interview purposes but I really celebrate your, your boldness, the boldness of the Holy Ghost. And I just know that what you're seeing is nothing compared to what God is about to do. Is it First Corinthians two verse nine? Me know my words, so me know me wrong. Eyes haven't seen and ears haven't he heard. Haven't heard the haven't that... entered into the hearts of men. What the good Lord is about to do for you, I'm saying it, and I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. Man, I God, I'm proud of you, and God is about to blow your mind. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. You are going global. God bless Amen. you, and Amen. thank you so much. Any last word for our viewing audience? Uh, thank you so much, guys. And I just want y'all to just, you know, you know, go into relationship because it has done tremendous work in Sheena's life, my life and a whole lot other people's life. So I want you to do that. Yeah. And thank you for supporting her. And um, and, and you too. I, I don't know if you know this platform, this this new version, this new department of this whole thing i declare that it will go out into the nations i declare that people will find it from all walks of life not for my sake not for her sake but for the glory of god i declare because her heart is pure and she she chases after god and i love that i love when people put god at, at, as a priority in their life so when you do that for god and god sees your heart and he he could have trusted you with sheena power talk so let me tell you whatsoever it is that god has in store for you too you you haven't you're not yet prepared because jamaica don't it, it, Jamaica can't hold you. This is not where God is going to keep you. There's places that you're going to go where you're going to say, God, me. And I want to tell you, continue to trust, continue to put in the work because God loves to show things, you know, but, you know, there's not everything God tell me to permit. But I want to tell you that God is not done with you. God is not just, God is just getting started. So, you know, be prepared for the more. Be prepared because when he's ready, you have to be in ready mode, you know? So I wanted to tell you that. Thank you so much. And with all of that being said, we say amen, amen, amen. It's a wrap, Power Gang. I love you so much. Remember, click on the link, go over to record the social media on TikTok, inspirational content, YouTube, inspirational content. Everywhere you go, everything he does represents Christ and will always leave you motivated, encouraged, and wanting to change. Because sometimes the word no, pretty what the word is to change you. Yeah. God bless you and thank you so much, man of God. She not power talk. Hey, Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today. You can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1-876-429-6004. Listen, Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. 
Hey beauties and cuties, thank you so much for being a part of Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I trust that your soul is edified, Satan is terrified, and God is glorified. If you want to be a part of this amazing move, this divine move, you can always call me or contact me on any social media handles. Don't keep that story to yourself. Let it out. Let yourself be free and free somebody else. Share your story today on Sheena Power Gang. Listen to me, Power Team. Power Gang, we are cause an eruption in the earth. We are called for revival. And God has set the nigga and broke out in our life. In Jesus' name, let it be well. God bless you. And please remember, if you do want to sow, if you do want to help this ministry monetary, you can always contact me. You can always get me through Cash App or other different means like Western Union, MoneyGram, anything and any way you want to sow and make an offering to what God is doing i would really appreciate it there are things that we need as we develop and we trust that you will be generous to us as the lord will lead you thank you so much for making it sheena power gang you don't know how big things are going to sheena power gang and power gang gonna lead god bless you god keep you